If you hacked every Hollywood movie studio in the world, you'd find all sorts of software, some using Maya, others with 3ds Max, and even a few with Blender installed. But across all of them, the one program you're almost guaranteed to see is Houdini. It's the most common installation because it handles complex effects, simulations, and procedural workflows better than anything else. Most people know Houdini for its superior VFX tools, but what is often not mentioned is how Houdini has been the undisputed champion in many other areas of the 3D world. Want to generate vast landscapes with towering mountains, detailed ecosystems, and a densely populated town? Houdini can do it. Need to add working roads in that town, complete with dynamic traffic systems and animated crowds? You don't need an extra add-on or third-party plug-in. Barebones Houdini is enough. If you're planning to work in the film industry, prepare to learn Houdini. If you're aiming for a career in the gaming industry, you'd better get familiar with it. Want an edge in the medical field as a 3D artist? Add Houdini to your list of skills. It's used to visualize complex data like viruses, cells, and surgical simulations. Expect to see it in the advertising world too, powering everything from flashy product reveals to surreal motion graphics. Houdini isn't just a tool, it's a universal language for technical artists, a cornerstone of modern digital content creation, and one of the most powerful pieces of software you can learn today. Even in AAA game development, Houdini is in a league of its own. In games like Forza Horizon, Houdini was used to generate procedural rural towns and intricate road systems that wind naturally through forests, hills, and valleys. Instead of manually placing every tree, house, or path, developers built intelligent systems that respond to terrain, context, and design goals, all powered by Houdini. This level of procedural control allows studios to create massive, detailed worlds faster and more efficiently than traditional methods ever could. What makes Houdini nearly impossible to throw is its foundation. It isn't built like other 3D programs that layer features on top of static tools. Houdini is built from the ground up with nodes, logic, and systems thinking. Everything is procedural, everything is adaptable, and everything is transparent. That means artists can create once and then tweak infinitely without starting over. No other 3D application matches this level of flexibility, making Houdini not just the best at what it does, but the future-proof choice for any serious production pipeline. Houdini was created by SideFX, a Toronto-based company founded in 1987 by Kim Davidson and Greg Hermanovich. What made Houdini stand out from day one was its commitment to proceduralism, a way of building scenes, simulations, and animations that can be adjusted non-destructively at any point in the pipeline. This approach was revolutionary, and over time, it cemented Houdini's role as the go-to solution for complex and customizable 3D workflows. One of the earliest films to showcase Houdini's power was Disney's Dinosaur, 2000, where side effects tools were used for effects like dust, fire, and water. Since then, Houdini has contributed to countless blockbusters, including The Avengers, Interstellar, Frozen, and Black Panther. It's often the invisible backbone behind massive destruction sequences, magical effects, realistic fluids, and more. Studios like ILM, Weta Digital, and Double Negative all rely heavily on Houdini, not just for what it can do visually, but for how efficiently it can fit into a pipeline. Fun fact, the name Houdini pays homage to the legendary escape artist Harry Houdini, symbolizing the software's ability to break free from creative constraints. And true to its name, Houdini has empowered artists to escape the limitations of traditional tools and build exactly what they envision, no matter how complex. Most of you may already know that Houdini is a procedural program that is based on nodes, similar to what we see in Blender's geometry nodes. But it would be a mistake to directly compare the two. While they may look alike on the surface, they are worlds apart in capability. The best way to think about it is, geometry nodes is like a small module within Houdini. Everything geometry nodes can do fits, fits neatly inside just one area of Houdini's vast ecosystem. And then Houdini continues far beyond that, offering hundreds of other specialized tools and systems. Houdini isn't just about geometry. It has dedicated context for particles, pop, fluids, flip, rigid bodies, RBD, volumes, VDB, crowds, terrains, shaders, VOPs, and even scripting and pipeline integration through VEX and Python. All of these are node-based, interoperable, and procedural. For example, you can use its procedural nodes to model a bridge, then connect that same bridge to an RB RBD bullet solver to simulate its collapse. At the same time, you can use the velocities generated by the simulation to drive smoke, dust, and extra debris effects using the fluid and volume systems, all dynamically connected. 
Everything in Houdini can talk to everything else, which makes building large-scale destruction sequences and complex effects not just possible, but efficient and adaptable. You can build a simulation, wrap it in a digital asset, deploy it across a pipeline, and have every instance of it automatically adapt to new inputs. It's like having um, a full production studio wrapped inside a single application. On top of all that, you can still do all the other things you'd expect from a traditional 3D application, like direct modeling. Houdini is not strictly limited to nodes for everything. You can model using familiar tools such as extrude, bevel, polyfill, bridge, and cut. The only difference is that each action is stored as a node in the network, giving you a full editable history of your modeling process. This means you can go back in time and make changes to any step without redoing everything. The trade-off is a longer list of nodes tracking your process, but the advantage is unparalleled flexibility. And if you prefer a more streamlined approach, there are also Houdini plugins from third-party vendors and even side effects themselves that offer more traditional mesh editing experiences without the sometimes unnecessary nodes, giving artists the freedom to choose how they work. It's sometimes hard to understand the difference between applications like Maya, Blender, 3ds Max, and Houdini. But here's a helpful way to think about it. If it can be hand animated, rigged, or manually modeled, Maya, Blender, and 3ds Max will serve you well. But if you want to simulate something dynamic like magic spells, fireballs, explosions, collapsing buildings, fluid simulations, growing forests, or complex particle effects, Houdini is where you need to be. Now, that's not to say the others can't do these things. In Blender alone, there are add-ons for everything. Tree generators, particle libraries, traffic simulators, even basic crowd tools. But for major studios where efficiency, scalability, and control matter most, Houdini provides a unified, non-destructive system that scales from small tasks to massive pipelines. And that's exactly why I chose to learn it. Once you start digging into how Houdini works, you realize it's not as scary as it looks. It rewards logic, experimentation, and creativity. Whether you're building a village, a volcano, or a virus, if you can think it, you can build it in Houdini. In the ever-evolving world of digital content, uh, where visuals are getting more ambitious and deadlines tighter, Houdini stands out not just as a piece of software, but as a mindset. It teaches you think in systems to design smart and to work with the kind of power that lets you create the impossible. If you're serious about pushing the limits of what's possible in 3D, there's really no better place to start than Houdini.